In the last episode of the Boolean Gemini build, we tested some techniques on the scope. Today, we're putting together the gun handle to see how it fits in my hand and make sure everything is scaled correctly. <music> Greetings and welcome to Prop 3D, your look into 3D printing for prop and costume making. I'm Bill, and today we're getting a handle on things because I made a handle, I made a handle for the gun. It's a, I'm sorry. When I originally put my reference images into Fusion 360 to model the scope, I had a pretty good idea that I had made all of the pieces at the right scale. Now, just to make sure that I wouldn't be making the rest of the thing and have it be way too small or way too big, I decided the next thing we should make is the handle. That way I can grip it and make sure that it at least feels like it's the right size. And I can confirm it fits nicely into my average human sized hand and we can build the rest of the gun feeling pretty confident that everything will be the right size. So let's dive into it. Most of this video is gonna be on 3D modeling all of our parts using Fusion 360. If you haven't tried it out already, I recommend it. You can download it for free from the folks over at Autodesk if you are a student or if you are a hobbyist, or if you, like me, are a small startup company. So let's dive in. Just like with the scope, I built all of my parts using my reference image. I started by tracing the outlines of the handle using a sketch with some lines, circles, and arcs. Really here, I'm just tracing the image. I'm not doing anything all that fancy. With all the outlines done, I extruded the sketch to make the bulk of the handle mass. This was extruded to the width of the handle using the reference images as my guide. Some of the other parts of the gun were extruded at a different time so that they could be made a different thickness. This handle is mostly flat, which makes it a snap for modeling in Fusion 360 in this manner, but there are some beveled edges that make it a little more contoured to the human hand. For this, I selected those edges to modify them and applied a chamfer. This chamfer was pulled down until it matched my reference image, again, just kind of tracing it, nothing super precise. Chamfers were added to all of the required edges and then I went the extra step and rounded some of those edges over using a fillet. These are all areas where my hand would be coming in contact with the gun and I wanted them to be nice and smooth. There are also some surface details on the handle that needed to be carved in so I started outlining them using a sketch on the side of the gun. These were all just kind of eyeballed a little bit by looking at a reference image and drawn using circles, lines, and fillets in the sketch. When that first line was knocked out, I used the offset command to draw a second line inside the first one about a millimeter apart. This sketch was used to extrude a cutout into the surface of the gun handle. The same was done on the opposite side of the handle. I also drew a quick sketch for the trigger. Now, I won't be printing that on this part yet, but after extruding the trigger shape, I used it to cut out a little bit of an indent into the handle. This is where the trigger will eventually be seated and I wanted a little bit of registration in the handle print. There are some circular shapes on the side of the handle. These were done quickly with a few circle sketches that were extruded into the side of the handle to create the indents. And then I softened the edges of the circles using some more chamfers. The model looks pretty good, but it's a little bit big to fit in my 3D printer, so it needed to be cut into two pieces. I started by sketching out a shape around the rear of the handle and extruding it making sure to keep it as a new object and not cutting through the solid. Not yet, anyway. Then I modeled a box on the surface of that solid in the area where it would cut apart the two pieces. This box was chamfered to create some nice registration between the two parts. You'll see where that comes together in just a moment. Then I duplicated the handle solid on top of itself and used this new piece to combine together and cut apart the handle into two pieces. Two cuts were made. This first one to cut out the front of the handle and another one to cut out the rear of the handle using the front as a cutting tool. This is why I needed a duplicate of the entire handle piece. This gave me two solids that should fit back together nicely when printed. And you can see that area where the two parts will eventually combine where I put that chamfered box as registration. I exported the model as an STL file from Fusion 360, and for the first print, I tried it out in Simplify 3D to prep it for printing. Now, I'm still dialing in the best settings for all of my prints, but one thing I definitely like to add is a raft 
to ensure it'll stick to the bed really well. This takes a little longer and uses a little bit more material, but in my experience, it makes sure that nothing will go flying away during the print process. I also had to add a bunch of support material because this is kind of a weirdly shaped object. This particular print was done using Matter Hacker's Pro PLA plastic. You'll find links to these materials and the printer that we use in the description down below. This print took about 16 hours on the normal quality setting and it went pretty well. There was one trouble area where things went a little bit pear-shaped. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but I'll have to tinker with my print settings a bit to dial that in. Once I removed the support material, I could confirm that this does indeed fit in my hand. Now, about that little blemish. I could reprint the handle, but I've got some quick tricks up my sleeve that are perfect for this kind of project. I started by sanding down a little piece of acrylic plastic. You could use a wooden dowel if that's what you've got on hand. And then I super glued that rod into the infill of my print. This rod and the offending area were sanded down to provide some grip for our filler. I mixed up a little bit of Bondo and slathered it all around the problem area and let it cure. Once it was rock solid about 30 minutes later, I could start carving away at it with a knife to whittle it down to shape. I also used my rotary tool to really hog out all the extra material. I didn't quite get everything covered, so I applied a second round of Bondo to fill in the last bits. Some final filing and sanding fixed up that last bit of the blemish, and this part is ready for full sanding and painting. But we will get to that in a later video. This just goes to show you that you don't have to go through and reprint something if you can do a little bit of a fix like this, it took about an hour instead of that full 16 hour print. This whole thing is gonna get sanded and painted anyway, so you will never notice this part. The second part of the handle is printing right now behind me, right there, and for that one, I tried out Cura, the software that comes with the Ultimaker, and we'll compare those two prints later. Also, in the next video, I'll show how those parts get glued together along this nice registration mark that we made. Hey gang, thanks so much for checking out the video. This build is coming along nicely. Hopefully you guys learned a couple things about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and some filler work. If you haven't already, please check out some of our other 3D printing videos. We have some projects from last season. We've got the scope video from this and some other really great content. Of course, if you haven't subscribed already, you really ought to. We've got more 3D printing videos. We have eight more videos in this series and a whole bunch more prop and costume making goodness coming out for your eyeballs soon. I hope I've inspired you guys to give some of this stuff a try. Maybe go grab Fusion 360, do some modeling, have fun with it, and I will see you on the next episode of Prop 3D.